So this right now uh, it's going to be a very long uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this is going to be on uh, climate, biomes, physical geography of North America. Uh, I will also I will upload upload this to uh, my YouTube channel as well to Google Classroom, and I'll send a remind out uh, to let you know that's on Google Classroom. So first thing we want to do when we talk about uh, climate fact climate is that um, there are eight factors that affect climate and we use the acronym lace mops uh, in order for us to help us to remember and also um, to explain climate so uh, make sure you set up your Cornell notes so um, I set up your Cornell notes uh, Make sure that at the end of your corner notes you have a good summary, uh, three to four sentences, and uh, make sure you have a level one, level two, level three question. Now, with this larger PowerPoint, uh, you're going to probably have to have, have more than just one, two, and three level one questions. You should probably at least have uh, at least one for each section, each uh, one for each section. So, uh, for lace mops, at least uh, one level one, two, and three question. For biomes, at least one level one, two, and three question. Uh, for the physical geography of uh, North America, uh, level one, two, and three question. And for uh, climate types, uh, one level one, two, and three question. So for probably about a total of about not about twelve uh, questions you need to have. Okay, so normally when I teach uh, lace mops. Um, I uh, normally teach this as a foldable, uh, but since we are um, AP students, uh, we want to go ahead and uh, not do the foldable today and just take good Cornell notes. Okay, so terms that you need to know, uh, you need to go ahead and know that rotation equals one day, which means it takes Earth 24 hours to make one complete rotation on its axis. And a revolution is one year takes the Earth 365 and a quarter days one year to make one complete revolution around the sun. This is one reason why every fourth year we have what we call a leap year uh, to make up for that extra uh, quarter day. Weather the daily condition over of the atmosphere. So that means uh, today is sunny, tomorrow might be rainy, the next day is going to be sunny again. Climate is the weather conditions over time. So basically what that means is as say take a course of a year, two years, five years, and you notice that uh, it rains uh, more likely it's going to rain in the wintertime than in the summertime and that uh, it's very hot or humid in the summertime and it's maybe not as cold uh, in the wintertime. Uh, that is what climate is. And then precipitation is moisture that falls from the sky, rain, snow, sleet, and hail. So you should know, uh, you remember uh, about the water cycle, uh, from eighth grade uh, that causes precipitation I think you should be okay when we when we talk about uh, storms and uh, rain uh, later on in our uh, presentation here okay so uh, what we want to do when we study climate we want to be able to go ahead and uh, read a climograph and uh, this basically gives us uh, an idea of looking uh, about uh, temperature and precipitation over time and if you notice that uh, at the bottom of the, of the climate graph of the months of the year uh, the blue bar graphs represent the precipitation uh, and then the uh, then the line graph is the average temperature for each month so we know that here in Bangalore India uh, that uh, the hottest uh, month, the, the hottest month, uh, you, it looks like it's going to be uh, May with an average temperature of about you know, about 30 degrees Celsius. But we notice that uh, in June and July, uh, we know that it has the most precipitation uh, with about uh, a thousand millimeters of rainfall. Okay. Uh
the L in lace mops is latitude, and latitude is the most important uh, factors in determining climate. Um, and that is basically how far north or south from the equator you are. And the reason that latitude is, is uh, very important has to do with uh, how the sun's rays and heat uh, strike the earth. Okay, so what I mean by this is that you have what we call insulation or incoming solar radiation. If you notice on this slide here, uh, you notice that the as you're close as you're near to the equator, your the sun's rays hit nearly straight on, and this is one reason why the equator it tends to be the hottest, is because um, the sun's rays are hitting straight on and it's and it's creating more heat. And as you no notice, that you're going further north and south from the equator because uh, the Earth is a sphere um, that you get. Uh, they hit the Earth at an angle, therefore it's cooler north or south at the equator because of the uh, angle of the Earth. Okay, now you have to understand something that uh, the Earth is tilted 23 and a half degrees on its axis. All right. Okay, so we talk about the zones of latitude here, and if you notice that uh, we have uh, three zones of latitude, we have the low latitudes, middle latitudes, and the high latitudes. Okay, the low latitudes is uh, at the equator and it's uh, within the tropics, and this is where you have uh, is very hot, very uh, rainy, or very dry. And you only have two seasons, the rainy season or the dry season. Then, you know, in the middle latitudes, this is where we have our temperate climates. And this is where you get the actually uh, true seasons, okay? A true fall, a true summer, a true spring, and a true winter. And at the high latitudes, um, we have the polar climates, and there's only really one season. It's just cold. Uh, and very, very short uh, summer of that all. All right. Okay, so if you look at these uh, two climate graphs right here, you can uh, try to pick out which one that is a tropical climate. All right. So uh, you remember tropical climates um, are at the low latitudes. So there's only two types of seasons, a rainy and a dry one. So uh, write it down in your notes what you think it is. Is it climate A or climate B? Okay, so we're talking about uh, air masses here. In northern hemisphere, you have the cold air from the polar regions, comes from the north, and hot air from the tropics comes from the south. And in the southern hemisphere, it's the reverse. And when we're dealing with uh, climate, something that's very, very s simple that you need to remember, and that is that uh, cold air wants to be warm, warm air wants to be cold. I mean, same thing uh, when we talk about uh, air currents or uh, ocean currents as well. Okay, continentality. Uh, the effect of location on a continent. Okay? One of the, uh, besides latitude being a one of the uh, most important factors of determining climate, but the other one is continentality. Okay, so what you have to look at is that uh, the further inland you go uh, from uh, the coast, uh, the greater the difference in your climate between. Uh, winter and summer okay uh, so what happens is this remember close to a large body of water equals smaller difference in temperature farther away from water greater difference in temperature okay water 
does not heat or cool down quickly. Right. I mean, you probably can see this uh, if you're going to boil water. It takes a long time for it to heat up. And then uh, if you run a, a hot bath, it takes a long time for uh, the water to cool off. But land isn't. Land releases heat very, very quickly because of the vegetation. Okay, the vegetation tends to release a heat faster than water does. So, the E stands for elevation. Okay, the higher you go, the colder it gets. As you go up in elevation, the air gets thinner and does not trap heat. So, the question here is, are there glaciers on the equator, which is just basically ice, or ice and snow? Um, if you noticed uh, that picture right there, you notice in the foreground, there looks like is a, a giraffe. And in the back there is Mount Kilimanjaro, uh, the largest mountain in Africa. Okay. Um, so what happens is this. Uh, for about every thousand feet in elevation you go, uh, the temperature drops about three and a half degrees. So, you know, out, out there on the tropical savanna, it could be 100 degrees out. But as you go up about 14,000 feet, uh, it's probably... Uh, closer to like maybe 50 or 60 or 40 degrees, 30 degrees, uh, as farther you go up. So this one we talk about elevation, it's something called altitudinal zonation. So the farther up you go in altitude or farther you go up in out elevation, uh, it will affect uh, the different types of biomes and different types of vegetation that will grow. Okay, uh, right here, this is uh, some uh, names for uh, South American climates, okay, or Central American climates. Uh, is the Tierra Caliente, okay, the, more the hot zone, hot tropical coastal, tropical rainforest. Uh, the tropical agriculture is, is grown there, bananas and sugar. Then we go about uh, up to about from 2,500 uh, feet to 6,000 feet, you're on the Tierra Templada. Uh, the most populated zone common in Central America, this is where you build, this is where your coffee, corn, and wheat are grown. And then when you go in the uh, Tierra Fria, uh, from 6,000 to 12,000 feet, uh, you have barley, potatoes, and this is highest zone in Central America. Um, you have up to the tree line. Now, what you have to understand about the tree line, the tree line is the highest elevation that a tree can grow and that means because anything up higher than that the trees cannot grow probably because it's just too barren uh, maybe you have poor soil and the nutrients uh, and uh, trees cannot thrive uh, pretty much above uh, the tree line which is around 12,000 feet okay and then you have uh, the Tierra Helada which is very cold barren sheep grazing is right below the snow line. And the snow line is in the Tierra Nevada is where uh, snow begins uh, on a mountain. Okay, so Mountain barriers. That was for mountain barrier. Okay, also known as the orographic effect or the rain shadow effect. All right, this is a very major uh, influence on climate. So once you look at the latitude of some place, then you look at the uh, elevation and the, or the continentality. Then you gotta look at the mountain barriers. Okay, so what happens is this: is that the winds blow across the ocean, push moisture inland. Moisture cloud reaches the mountain and gets popped by the mountain top and rains on the coastal side. If you look at that graphic right there. Uh, by the top, the other side of the mountain, the air is dry. So, uh, which is uh, what we call the uh, leeward side. The leeward side is where the rain shadow is. And on the leeward side of a, of a mountain, 
is that this is where you will get you might find deserts or semi uh, arid uh, regions or uh, maybe some uh, chaparral uh, the windward side is where the where it's very very wet and it tends to rain a lot O is for ocean currents. So, even the United Kingdom and most of Europe are on, this, are on the same line of latitude as Canada, they don't necessarily experience the same climate. If you notice here in this graphic right here, the Gulf Stream, which later on turns into the Mid-Atlantic Drift, uh, is a warm current. And what it does is that that flows up from the equator and that keeps Europe warmer than it should be at that latitude. Okay? Because, again... Uh, what the ocean current does because it takes a long time for the uh, water to cool uh, it has a moderating uh, effect on uh, climate which is one reason why uh, for instance London England tends to have a lot of fog because it's getting all that moist uh, air in the uh, atmosphere which causes the fog Okay, using both men, but how do you explain the existence of a desert region of southwestern Africa? Well, you notice that uh, you have the warm ocean currents in red, then you have the blue ocean currents, which are uh, colder ocean currents, are in blue. You see they're coming off the uh, southwestern uh, coast of Africa right there. Now, uh, remember what I said before that... Uh, you know, warm air wants to be warm and cold air. Warm air wants to be cold and cold air wants to be warm. Well, that's the same thing with ocean currents. Warm water wants to be cold, and cold water wants to be warm. And and based on uh, the uh, rotation of the Earth on its axis, that creates a Coriolis effect for uh, air currents. Uh, the ocean, it also affects uh, ocean currents to a small degree as well. And so what happens is. One of the reasons why there is a Sahara Desert, which is the largest hot desert in the world, is that um, two major factors. One is that you have, as you have the North Atlantic Drift starts making its way back uh, southward towards Africa, it gets colder. And once it makes it uh, to the uh, coast of Africa, and it starts making its way back uh, to uh, the Gulf and into the Gulf Stream where it gets warmer. Uh, you have that cold cold water there, which creates uh, drier conditions. Now, another uh, another issue there too is that along the uh, the uh, let's say northeastern northwestern coast of of Africa, right around the Sahara Desert, is the Atlas Mountains that also acts as a mountain barrier, which creates a rain shadow that also contributes uh, to the Sahara Desert. All right, P is for pressure, so you have pressure systems. Now heavy pressure, heavy cool air brings clear skies and no rain. Low pressure brings light warm air and usually brings precipitation with it. Okay. At the equator and at both lines at 60 degrees latitude, the air is rising. So where air rises, you get, will get rain. So those areas tend to be very humid. And we see this as well here in southeast Texas. We are in a humid subtropical climate region. And so the humidity means that we have a lot of moisture in the air. And we know that we do rain a lot. And that thing between the high pressure and low pressure system, that's what happened with Hurricane Harvey. Hurricane Harvey was a low pressure system that uh, one reason why it stayed so long along our Gulf Coast was because it was a low pressure system that was uh, sandwiched um, between two high pressure systems so it had nowhere to go and had to basically rain itself out. The Coriolis effect, this is something that is very important, you need, definitely need to know this. This is the reason why uh, winds do not always blow uh, straight.
straight, okay? Um, because of the Earth's rotation, they are turned at an angle. In the northern hemisphere, they turn to the right, and the southern hemisphere to the left. This bending of the wind is called the Coriolis effect, and uh, it does have a uh, is important in climate uh, because if you notice, um, like for instance, how our hurricanes form and move is based on the Coriolis effect. So if you notice here in this slide, you can see that uh, they're asking for the difference between uh, the world's major desert, okay? Um, you know, high pressure versus low pressure. Well, again, you look at the Sahara Desert in uh, North Africa. Um, you know, you have the uh, cold air current, which uh, tends to make, bring, uh, it tends to make the climate there drier, so less rain. The Atlas Mountains along that area that helps create the rain shadow. Then we have um, the uh, along the area right here. You have uh, the dry air sinking uh, from the the westerlies turning into the trade winds. All right, so that area along the North Africa right here of the Sahara Desert that uh, has this uh, triple whammy, if you will. Uh, which one reason why it creates this very large desert. Okay, so right here we have the uh, acronym lace mops right here and it was developed by Dr. James Peterson at Texas State University San Marcos in 1990 so if you understand uh, remember the acronym lace mops understand what everyone everyone stands for and also understand that it about it's about making connections okay that all builds together and this is one reason why we can understand our climate okay latitude incoming solar radiation how do the rays of the uh, at what angles do the sun's rays hit the earth uh, along with um, you know air pressure system uh, with pressure systems and uh, air currents and continentality and uh, air masses and elevation and pressure systems and storms ocean currents they all mountain barriers they all play an important role in climate if you understand this you can understand where the connections are uh, uh, through lace mops uh, understanding climate will not be a problem in, for you
Right, so you see a picture here of the United States of physical map right here. So you notice here we have the coastal plains. Uh, you have the Atlantic coastal plain, which goes from about Florida uh, through the, uh, through the uh, Carolinas. And then you have the Gulf Coast, which is uh, which is uh, Texas, Louisiana, uh, Alabama. Uh, and if you notice that along with the Appalachian Mountains, um, the Appalachian Mountains are a very old mountain range, geologically speaking. But you notice the uh, little, the dry areas right there. So you can you notice then that, that uh, you can see that the windward side is coming off the Atlantic coastal plain, and the leeward side is uh, uh, right, right where the Central Lowlands begin. Um, and this is. Uh, you, you can see there's just some. Uh, it's a little bit drier over on the leeward side right here. And then moving into the central lowlands, uh, you see we have a lot of major rivers right there uh, to the Ozark Plateau. And you have the Great Plains, which goes uh, from uh, you know from uh, the Panhandle of Texas all the way up uh, almost to uh, to Montana. So. And you notice then as we get closer to the Rocky Mountains, you know there's less and less uh, vegetation growing. And we get drier. That is because uh, the Rocky Mountains um, is acting as a rain shadow uh, in the vicinity of the Great Plains. Now, you have the Columbia Plateau, the Sierra Nevada uh, Mountains, the Rocky Mountains. And you know, in the Cascade Range, you know, this all kind of creates uh, this desert uh, here uh, throughout uh, what is now Nevada and Arizona and New Mexico uh, into uh, Utah. So, uh, you know, and also along the uh, coastline of the West Coast, on the West Coast, Marine West Coast climate, it is a uh, more of a uh, cold water climate so it tends to be drier as well. Okay, a, megalo uh, a megapolis. Okay, it's a continuous line of settlement. And we'll talk more about this when we get to urban geography. But it is something you know is if you look at the uh, map of the United States at night, you can see uh, where most of the population is. That the most population is along. Uh, the Washington Baltimore uh, uh, New York corridor right there um, as they make obvious the continuous line of settlement and you look at this uh, you notice that it starts in Maryland you got Washington DC it goes through New Jersey all the way through uh, into uh, New York uh, and it follows basically the fall line and the uh, fall line is actually uh, an area where there's a lot of uh, a lot of miniature waterfalls, a lot of small waterfalls, and the fall line is where they built a lot of mills uh, to uh, uh, whether it's lumber mills or uh, making uh, pottery mills, or anything like that, because it, they needed the uh, uh, stronger running water uh, to, in order to make it work.